how do you think the Spaniards and the native peoples from America felt when they encountered one another? How do you think their their visions of the world, their traditions, their understanding of nature, their values in general, clashed? Well, this is exactly the kind of conflict that is depicted in the book I chose, which is Things Fall Apart and was written by Chinua Achebe in 1958. Who's Chinua Achebe? Well, he's a Nigerian author who was born in 1930 um, to a family of uh, converted Protestants and who incarnates precisely the conflict uh, that he depicts in his books. For example, um, he was baptized as Albert Chinua Achebe, but later in his life he decided to reject his Christian name and to keep only the native name Chinua Achebe. In contrast, he decided to keep English as his writing language, despite the criticism he received from many of the other African writers because he thought that English would allow him to reach a larger audience and to make his vision of African history and colonization um, to be understood from the African point of view. The story takes place um, in the same region where Chinua Achebe was born, which is in the southeast of, um, southwest of Nigeria. And um, even though there are many locations in the story, it takes place principally in, um, a, pl in a little town called Yumiofia. It happens uh, at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, the story t lasts uh, around 30 years, maybe. But uh, it mostly occurs when uh, the, uh, the British Empire was expanding its influence in Africa and where it was sending lots of missionaries uh, to the region to um, establish and expand their uh, its influence. The major characters in the novel include uh, many people from the uh, African local tribes that are uh, somehow Christianized and then representatives from the British Empire that are expanding their influence in the region. The major character, character is uh, certainly Okonkwo, who can hardly be said to be a hero because he is very violent. In, in fact, he's sometimes described as someone who, when he cannot make himself understood with words. Uh, he uses his fists to speak for him. Uh, he has three wives, he has nine children, he beats them all. Uh, whenever he, he has um, a conflict, he thinks violence is, uh, is a very valid means to solve it. And his major challenges are um, to be uh, seen as a strong person. He, he wants to overcome the, um, the image uh, of his father, whose, um, whose behavior led his Okonko's family to be in a very difficult position with lots of debts, and who was um, weak or who had so to say, feminine um, values. He liked to speak, he liked to um, play music, tell stories, and, and Okonko did exactly the opposite and never showed his feelings and wanted to be considered exactly uh, the opposite of his father. 
Uh, on the other hand, the other conflict he has is, of course, to repel the invasion of the white people in his in his land. His friend uh, Oberica um, is somehow the reverse um, in terms of personality and character. Uh, about the same age, but uh, very prudent, uh, wiser. Um, he tries to negotiate, he has a critical mind, he doesn't accept the values uh, or the traditions of his community just like that. Uh, sometimes he criticizes them. And to represent him, I chose this African symbol, which uh, is the symbol of humility, strength, wisdom, and learning. Then on the uh, western side, we have uh, Mr. Brown, who is um, the first missionary that arrives in Eumophia, the community where most of the story takes place, as I said before. This Mr. Brown is somehow Oberica's white counterpart. He's um, tolerant, open-minded, respectful, and he tries to understand local values and he understands that violence is not exactly the best means to spread Christianity. But when he is sick and he has to leave the community, uh, he's replaced by Reverend Smith, who somehow represents the opposite of Okonkwo. As you can see, both are represented by very violent symbols. Reverend Smith is very violent and he thinks um, Christianity should be um, spread uh, by whatever means. And uh, he doesn't think local culture deserves any respect uh, or tolerance. Well, as you can see, um, the conflict is, is complex, and I would like to share with you some passages that show how this conflict um, is, is dealt with. Um, the first passage I chose uh, refers uh, to Mr. Brown, who is a, an interesting character. Well. Whenever Mr. Brown went to that village, he spent long hours with Akuna, one of the great men in that village, in his obi, talking through an interpreter about religion. Neither of them succeeded in converting the other, but they learned more about their different beliefs. In this way, Mr. Brown learned a good deal about the religion of the clan, and he came to the conclusion that a frontal attack on it would not succeed. And so he built a school and a little hospital in Eumophia. He went from family to family, begging people to send their children to his school. But at first they only sent their slaves, or sometimes their lazy children. Mr. Brown begged and argued and prophesied. He said that the leaders of the land in the future would be men and women who had learned to read and write. If Eumophia failed to send their children to the school, strangers would come from other places to rule them. In the end, Mr. Brown's arguments began to have an effect. More people came to learn in his school, and he encouraged them. New churches were established in the surrounding villages and a few schools with them. From the very beginning, religion and education went hand in hand. Now, I would like to share with you um, a passage um, which is a conversation between Okonkwo and Oberica. As you can imagine, not all the missionaries were as nice as Mr. Brown, and Okonkwo was not so happy to, to host them in his village. So he uh, simply proposes to get um, rid of them. Um, he says, 
We must fight these men and drive them from the land. His friend Oberica said sadly, It is already too late. Our own men and our own sons have joined the ranks of the stranger. They have joined his religion and they help to uphold his government. If we should try to drive out the white men in Eumophia, we should find it easy. There are only two of them. But what of our own people who are following their way and have been given power? Aconco asks, what has happened to that piece of land in dispute? Does the white man understand their custom about land? And Oberic answers, how can he when he does not even speak our tongue? But he says that our customs are bad, and our own brothers who have taken up his religious also said that our customs are bad. How do you think we can fight when our own brothers have turned against us? The white man is very clever. He came quietly and peaceably with his religion. We were amused at his foolishness and allowed him to stay. Now he has won our brothers and our clan can no longer act like one. He has put a knife on the things that held us together and we have fallen apart. Well, these are some of the um, passages that reflect that not everything is black and white. It's not easy to just um, accept one's traditions because they are, they are ours or just to reject the new things just because they come from a stranger. I think the um, uh, um, something that summarizes very appropriately Chinua Achebe's position about life is this phrase um, um, expressed by Eichem, one of his characters in another novel, Ant Hills of the Savannah. Whatever you are is never enough. You must find a way to accept something, however small, from the other to make you whole and to save you from the mortal sin of righteousness and extremism. I think this book is for anybody who likes to reflect upon this clash of civilizations that, for example, has also characterized Mexico's history. I think we should look at our own history critically and this book from a different perspective um, is a good opportunity for us to reflect about our own life, our own values and what we should accept and what we sh can reject without feeling guilty. Thank you very much.